Hello and welcome to lecture 34 of the course Computational Complexity. In the last lecture, uh, we saw the threshold 2 function uh, which, requ uh, which requires 2 of the input bits to be 1. Right? We saw 3 approaches using circuits on how to, uh, how to decide that. Now we are going to see another 3 uh, approaches to, to decide the uh, threshold 2 function in this lecture. So, in the previous lecture, we saw brute force approach, hiding approach and the partition uh, recursive approach, sorry. So, the approach that we will see first is the partition approach. Okay. So, again the key thing is that we, there has to be two ones in the input. So, in the, in the recursive approach, right, we, we divide it into two halves, x1 to xn by 2 and xn by 2 plus 1 to xn. Now, uh, another way of doing that could be to, and, and then did, did this uh, recursive, uh, recursive thing. Another way is to try all the possible partitions. So, one way is to x1 and x, x1 on one side and everything else on other side, x1, x2 on one side and x3, x4 up to others, rest on the other side, x1, x2, x3 on one side and so on. So, we can consider partitions like this, where we consider up to a certain i. Right. So, the in general situation it is this x1 to xi on one side and x, xi to x, xi plus 1 to xn on the other side. So, there are n minus 1 possible such partitions that we can consider x1 on one side, x1, x2 on one side, x1, x2, x3 and so on up to x1 up to x1, x2, x3 up to xi on one side. Right. This is the general case. So, there are x, there are n minus 1 such partitions we can consider. If um, if the if 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 the this is a yes instance of the threshold function, meaning there are two there are two values x i and x j for which uh, the both the bits x i and x j are one. That means that this means that um, for at least one of these parts, right? Uh, at least one of these partitions, both sides should have at least one one, right? So, just to illustrate this, suppose this is the this is x1, x2 and so on, right, x3, right. Suppose, let us say this is one, this there are only two bits which are one, let us say this is x7 and let us say this is x13, right. So, now consider any partition that breaks it between that. So, now the left half has x7 and the right half has x13. Right? So, basically if, if uh, basically if x sorry if xi and xj are the two uh, two bits that are one then consider uh, where x let us say without loss of generality x j is bigger than i. Now, consider the ith partition which takes x i on to one side and naturally since j is bigger than i, j will be on the other side. So, this, this partition, the ith partition will split the two ones into two halves. Then all that we need to check is, is there a one in both the halves? Is there at least one one in both the halves or both the parts? These are not really halves. So, this is the partition approach. And let us try how to, re, uh, how to formalize this. So, the, the, again I have said the basic idea which is to check whether there is a partition, whether there is a 1 in the left and 1 in the right. So, we do this, again this is the top one is the output, right. So, we try all possible partitions x1 on one side and x2 to xn on the other side, x1, x2 on one side and x3 to xn on the other side and so on up to x1, x2 up to xn minus 1 on one side and xn on the other side. And then in each of these partitions, we take the or of each part. So, here x1 is alone, so there is no or in the first part. x2 to xn is one part, so we have this, this or gate, right. In the second x1, x2 form an or gate, x3 to xn form an or gate. In the last x1 to x mi xn minus 1 forms an or gate and obviously xn is alone, so there is no need of an or gate, right. And then for each of these partitions, we have ants. So, the ands are in this level, right. 
basically we need to check we need to have an one in this half and a one in this part right so we need to have an and gate and at the top we have an or gate right so i suppose the correctness is evident from what i have described above this or before this so size how many gates are there there are uh, there are n minus 1 possible partitions right and for each of these so, so this is one partition this is one partition this is one partition right for each of these partitions in general we have three gates two or and one and so that's why it is three times n minus 1 right but and and plus one top level gate which is the output gate so three times n minus 1 plus the output gate three times n minus 1 plus 1 and I have subtracted 2 here, this minus 2. It is because the leftmost partition and the rightmost partition have one gate less. They just need two, uh, they just need two gates, one or and one and, because they have they have one singleton part each. So it's, it's, but anyway, this minus 2 doesn't really change the asymptotic factor, it's still order n, right? It's 3n minus 1 plus 1 minus 2. It's still order n, which is what we are bothered about. And number of wires. So at the bottom level itself, uh, x1 goes to the uh, each partition requires n wires, each each partition, and there are n minus one partitions. So n times n minus one uh, many wires are required in the bottom level itself to the OR gates. Then to AND gates there are n minus one partitions, and there are two uh, wires per part. So two times n minus one. And then at the top level again n minus 1 partitions go into an OR gate so that is n minus 1 uh, wire so n times n minus 1 plus 2 times n minus 1 plus n minus 1 again I put less than or equal to here because um, uh, the, the extreme left and right uh, parts may have slightly less but the key thing is this n times n minus 1 <coughs> which contributes to an uh, order n squared right so asymptotically it is order n squared. And fanin is unbounded because consider all these uh, that either the top level gate or the bottom gates, all the OR gates have uh, take n input or n minus one inputs, right? So the fanin is unbounded. So size is linear, uh, wires is uh, quadratic, and fanin is unbounded. So we saw many approaches already, like this. Uh, and so far this height, uh, the recursive approach seems to be the best, right? Size is order n wires is order n log n and fan n is uh, unbounded on the first appearance but it seems like it can be made bounded okay moving on the next one is a recursive grid based approach okay again this um, one needs to first um, one needs to assume that n is a perfect square for this to to, to visualize this if n is not a perfect square we can always uh, pad a bunch of inputs you can you can go to the next square and then then execute this right so suppose n is 500 500 is not a perfect square then you can go to 529 which is the next perfect square right? so add some few extra bits which which we control and make it zero because right because uh, make it make it false because we need to see if there are two bits which are one in the first part itself right again what are we trying to under, uh, do here if there are two bits, um, two positions xi and xj which are both 1, right? Now, either these xi and xj are in different rows, right? which means they are in different rows or they are in the different columns. They cannot be in the same row and the same column. Same row, same column means they will be at the same position. right? Same position means i is fixed or j is fixed. So either they have to be in two rows or they have to be in two columns. So either two rows. either xi xj in distinct rows or distinct columns in distinct columns
right? And this is what we will formalize in this approach. So either they are in distinct rows or distinct columns. So suppose they are in distinct columns, right? So let us, or let us say, suppose they are in distinct uh, columns. Let's say that means if you take an OR of all the columns, there will be at least two columns in which uh, there is a one. So at least two of these column inputs will be true. And then we we have a threshold uh, square uh, threshold two gate or threshold two circuit at the uh, with square root and inputs, right? Threshold two uh, circuit with square root and inputs to decide that. So this is also potentially a recursive approach. And to check whether there are two uh, ones in distinct rows, again we have we take OR of all the rows, and if if there are two uh, ones in two distinct rows, these these ORs there will be two two ORs which will be true, and then we have a threshold. Sorry, this is not threshold n, it's threshold 2 with square root and inputs. Threshold n, uh, threshold 2 uh, circuit with square root and inputs. And either you want the rows, uh, the row input, row threshold to be true or the th column threshold to be true. So you take an OR of b both of them and this is the output. So hopefully the, the, the correctness is evident, right? either there are two rows in which xi and xj are 1 or two columns. So if there are two rows then uh, this threshold function will fire the one that corresponds to the rows. If there are two distinct columns this, this green underlined threshold function the one corresponding to the columns will fire and finally we have an OR. So let us see the, 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 the size, wires etc. Right? Again I have written the idea here if x is equal to x is in the threshold then either then x i equal to x j is 1 where i and j are distinct. So, either they are different, different rows or different columns. So, size how many gates? We have 1, 2, 3 up to square root and gates here. Uh, square root and gates corresponding to columns, right? square root and gates corresponding to the rows and 1 uh, or gate. So, 2 times square root n plus 1 plus whatever is the recursive component that is 2 times uh, size of square root n because this is threshold 2 gates of size square root n right. So, this is the size. Uh, one thing that we can try in fact you can try that as an exercise is to now compute this recursion right. So, this is uh, n uh, size n equal to 2 times size square root n plus 2 times square root n plus 1. So, this recursion can be computed this is not the master theorem is not immediately applicable here because uh, it is not of that form we have n going to square root n but uh, there are some transformation tricks that you can uh, uh, you can employ and solve this I, I'm not going to get into that because this is not a uh, master theorem or discrete math or algorithm scores but you can work it out however to get a decent uh, solution we do not need a recursive approach so, for instance, this threshold 2 with square root and input need not be implemented in the same recursive manner. You do not need the same kind of grid based approach here. We could um, we could use the brute force approach for instance. So, recall the brute force approach had size n squared and, uh, and uh, wires also n squared. So, but that is when the, there are n bit input. So, when, when, there, when the inputs are square root n bits, then the, the brute force approach will give us a size n order n approach right so which is what i have write, written here if we can use the brute force approach to implement the threshold function on square root and input bits that will take so that that will make uh, size square root n to be uh, order n and uh, overall this function will also be order n right so this this will be order n sorry I will not use the green is not so nice to write it is good to highlight because it's, I made it thick it was, the size of this circuit will be order n uh, wires uh, you can see that x1 ha, there are two wires going from x1 one for to the row based OR gate right and one going to the 
So I'll circle that this OR gate, sorry. This OR gate, go, uh, x1 to this OR gate and x1 to this OR gate. And likewise for any xi, there are two outgoing wires. So that is two times, so, so there are n inputs, so there are two times n wires plus uh, square root n wires going to each of the threshold function on square root n inputs. So 2n I already explained, 2 times square root n for each of the threshold uh, going into the threshold function on square root n inputs and then 2 wires going into the OR gate. So this is explained. What remains is the number of wires inside the threshold square root n uh, uh, realization or the construction and that I am just calling it 2 times wires of square root n. Again, one thing that we can do is to compute this in a recursive setting. So you could implement it recursively where each threshold square root n, uh, uh, threshold square root n itself is realized using a similar grid based approach. So again, it will be a recursive calculation. As I said before, the master's theorem does not lend nicely to this, but you can solve it with some simple tricks. But however, just like in the case of size, uh, you don't need to do that because even if you use the brute force approach to realize the uh, threshold 2 function on square root n inputs, even then the number of wires will be linear or order n because it is, a, uh, it is on square root n inputs, so square of that will be order n. So overall you will get this also order n even if you use the brute force approach for implementing the uh, threshold uh, 2 circuit on square root n inputs. You do not need a recursive approach, but you can calculate what happens when you try the recursive approach. right? And um, Fanon, Fanon uh, again you can check uh, like each of these OR gates, right? it takes Fanon square root n which is not, which varies with the input, which is not a constant, right? so it is unbounded Fanon. So, I will just write that Fanon and as an exercise you can work out the, the recursions. Okay. So this is the grid recursive approach with the grid but again it need not be recursive and finally number 6 is binary partitions. Again, the idea is same here. Um, we already mentioned this idea in the partition approach that, that if there are two bits which are both one, then there has to be some part, uh, some partitioning where each part has a one. So we are just trying out, so basically most of these approaches we are trying out different ways to separate these, uh, these ones into two parts so that and checking whether each part has a one. right? So binary partitions is a similar approach. So suppose xi and xj are the two bits, bit positions which are both one. Now you can consider the binary representation of xi and xj. So for simplicity, let's just let's take uh, x7 and x12. Now x7 is nothing but 0, 1, 1, 1. X12 is 1, 1, 0, 0. So there are positions where they differ and any two numbers there will be some position where they differ. They cannot have the same binary representation if there are two different numbers. right? So here is one position where they differ, let us say this position. So now there will be some k in which i and j differ in the kth position where the kth uh, bitwise position. right? So now we will consider the following partitions. Right. Maybe I will explain the partitions in terms of uh, three bit numbers. One is where the for each k, where k, uh, k is a bit position, we are trying to um, categorize into two separate parts. So one is when k is the least significant bit. So when you have uh, three bit inputs, uh, the, the, when k is the least significant bit, k equal to 0 means the least LSB is 0 which means that we are just dealing with even numbers. 
when k equal to 1 we are just the last significant least significant bit is 1 which means we are dealing with odd numbers so um, the the partitions are uh, so 1 1 0 0 0 0 so maybe I, I don't need to write this down but uh, similarly uh, you can consider uh, the partitions where the middle bit differs and the partition where the, the, the most significant bit differs. So the partition where the most significant bit differs will be 0, 1, 2, 3 will be in one part, 4, 5, 6, 7 will be in the other part. right? And partition where the middle bit differs will be I think 0, 1 will be in one part, 0, 1, 5 and uh, 4 and 5 will be in one part, 2, 3, 6 and 7 will be in the other part. So these are the 3 partitions, one for each bit position that we get for 3 bit numbers. Okay. So, so there are 3 ways to partition 3 bit numbers, perhaps I will just write it down anyway. Right. So the first part is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 0. 1 1 0 1 0 0 this is on one side and 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 1 1 and 1 0 1 this is first partition second partition is 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 1 one one zero and finally the base on the middle bit zero 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 one one zero zero and one zero one right and finally zero one zero zero one 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 zero one 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 right so the three ways to partition the three bit numbers and and if for k or for for the four bit numbers you will have four ways to do this right so now consider the following partitions for the 3 bit numbers or for k bit for when you are dealing with numbers 1 to n there will be log n partitions right because to represent n bit n bit number to represent n we require log n bits right okay so we'll have log n such partitions right so in this case n is 8 because you you have inputs ranging from 0 to 7 there are 8 bit inputs right Eight, 8 positions and uh, but it can be re realized using 3 bits ok. So now what we do is if i and j are x i and x j are both 1 there is some partition where i and j differ or some position bit position where i and j differ and now consider that partition right. There has to be a 1 in this part as well as this part. So both parts have to have a 1. So you take an or here or here and an and of both of them, right. So fk is taking an or in the 0 part and or in the 1 part at the kth position. So bk0 is the set of all uh, all i which has 0 in the kth position, bk1 is the set of all uh, j which has 1 in the kth position and then take an or of both and then an and of the and of them together. So fk will be 1 if and only if uh, there is an uh, i in uh, one of the parts and there is a j in the other part. And finally we are just checking is there any partitioning such that uh, such that there is i in one part uh, there is a 1 in each part. So basically we need a we need an or of all the fk which is what we do here right. So whatever k is where i and j differ for that k fk will be equal to 1 again the correctness I think I have explained it good enough and what remains is to compute the size wires and fan. Let us compute the size. Um, Let us see so to compute fk how many gates are there so 1 2 3 there is an or gate for the one half or gate for the other half and an and gate so f computing fk requires 3 but multiplied by 
number of f case so how many case are there case how many bit positions we need which is log n so 3 times log n plus an or gate at the top level which is to compute f so 3 log n plus 1 and this is the first time we are seeing a sub linear sized uh, circuit right previous everything we saw uh, order n squared order n i think even order n log n i think right so this is order n this is order n this is n right this is n okay, n squared in fact we didn't see n log n we saw n and n squared wires so wires if you see each xi contributes to or each xi needs to give input to each part for each k right it will be it may be the zero part or one part but for each k it needs to give input to one of the parts so that will give us n times log n because each xi will give uh, one input to one k so there are n xi's and there are k log, uh, log n many k's so n times log n right and uh, and then the number of wires so this um, uh, uh, to the to the and gate that uh, computes fk we need two wires right so which is again 2 times log n plus uh, again log n wires to compute f. But anyway log n is uh, kind of uh, dominated by this n log n term here. So this is again or rather this is order n log n. And finally fan n this should not be that difficult even the bottom level or the top level f compute uh, requires log n many inputs. So log n itself is uh, variable with n so it is not fixed so this is unbounded so here we have a sublinear sized circuit but the number of wires goes up to order n log n um, yeah with that uh, i think we are at the end of this lecture so we saw three more uh, realizations of the threshold 2 function on n bits and the, the binary partitions the recursive uh, grid based approach and the uh, partition based approach and we saw how each each uh, realization um, does some kind of a trade of some some parameters go up while some parameters go down so there is a different there is a kind of balancing that we need to do in each of these cases uh, there are also other parameters uh, that are of interest in the case of circuits like uh, depth is another, another parameter um, in any case, we will uh, hope this gives you an idea of what circuits are and how to compute. You may also have noted how like for for a certain number of inputs like we, one circuit construction only fits a certain specific input input length. If I make uh, a circuit for an n length input, I can only feed n length inputs. I cannot use it to feed n plus 1 or n plus like 2 n sized inputs. So this is what I meant meant when I said non-uniform like I could potentially have the circuit for size n, n of a certain type and circuit for n plus 1 input uh, bits be of a different type. So I could have a non-uniform approach in uh, uh, having uh, different circuits for different require uh, different uh, input lengths right uh, and uh, to for more details I think um, and the formal definition of circuits, I gave a very high level definition. Um, we will take it up in the next week where we will see formal definition of the circuits and also see some uh, basic results like uh, which functions have circuits, um, how much size does do, do those circuits take, uh, do all functions, do they have circuit realizations, etc. Right? Uh, for, for instance, in the case of Turing machines, uh, there are languages which are undecidable, but what about circuits? Uh, are there undecidable or circuits, uh, languages that do not have circuits, right? So we will see all of that in the uh, next week. Uh, with that, we close uh, week 6. Uh, thank you.